Hi everyone, this is Manas Patnag and I'm back with a new tutorial on projection of planes. So guys, this time around we're going to be dealing with a regular hexagon. So why wait, let's get started with the problem itself. Here it comes. A hexagon with a 40mm side has a side in the VP and is inclined at 60 degrees to the HP. The side opposite to the side in the VP is 50mm in front of the VP. Whole lot of VPs are there. Anyway, let's go ahead and draw its projections. All right, so the object in this case is a regular hexagon with a 40 mm side. So all the six sides are 40 mm each. And you can clearly see that this uh, regular hexagon has six corners. So these are all internal angles and they are going to be equal to 120 degrees. All right, and let's move ahead. Certain conditions are given in the question and one condition is one side is in the VP. One side is in the VP. All right, let's move ahead. What about this 60 degrees? All right, let's read this again. And it's inclined at 60 degrees to the HP. Okay, guys, the side which is in the VP also makes a certain angle with the horizontal plane that is equivalent to 60 degrees. So theta side is equal to 60 degrees. All right. So all the data have been extracted from the problem and in the next section I'll give you a demonstration how the object has been really kept with respect to the horizontal plane and vertical plane, a live demonstration. All right. So stay tuned and here it comes. All right, guys. So this is the object under consideration. You can see this is a hexagonal plane and all the sides are 40 mm each. Now I'll be discussing conditions given in the problem. Now there is this condition number one, which says that one edge out of all the six edges, there is one such edge which will uh, always remain in contact with the vertical plane. All right, something like this. You can consider my body as a vertical plane and this is gonna be, let us say this edge will remain always in contact with the vertical plane. Fine. Condition number two, what's condition number two? And it says that uh, the edge opposite to the edge which is in the VP. Let's for now assume that we are keeping this edge always on the vertical plane. Then the edge opposite to this one is this guy. This is the edge opposite to this one. Now, it appears as if this edge lies at a distance of 50 millimeters from the vertical plane. Okay, something like this. Something like this. So this distance over here, okay, this distance over here is going to be 50 millimeters from the vertical plane. And this distance can only be seen from the top. All right. So this is going to be the condition number two, which is going to be implemented in step number two. All right. And in the third step, what we're going to do is we're going to incline the edge, which is in the VP at an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal plane and it's going to be something like this like this all right so this edge will always remain in contact with the vertical plane and it is going to incline uh, itself at a certain angle with the horizontal plane also that is going to be 60 degrees so i'll reiterate each and everything to you once again okay initially we'll assume that the surface is lying entirely on the vp all right in such a case the true shape of the surface is going to be seen from the front and hence we'll start by making the front view first in step number one and when you're looking at this object from the top you're going to observe this a line from this point to this one so this was all about step number one step number two we are going to do this we're going to make sure that this edge over here okay opposite to this edge we have this edge will make a certain uh, distance with the vertical plane and this distance is 50 millimeters and it can only be seen from the top all right so this were the first two steps and in this step number three, we are going to do this, making sure that this edge makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal plane. So guys, these are the three steps and let's now head over to drawing sheet. I'll head over to PowerPoint in order to explain you how all these things can be implemented. So let's get started. Now that you've seen the demonstration, guys, let's begin by making the orthographic view of the entire scenario. Let's have an XY line, all right, above which there is a VP vertical plane, below which there is a horizontal plane. Front views are going to be lines above this XY line and top views are going to be below this XY line. Now, initially in step number one, we are assuming the entire surface of this hexagonal plane to be resting on the vertical plane. All right, just think about this and in such a case, uh, the true shape of the surface can only be seen from the front and hence we are going to begin by making the front view first. Okay, so I have drawn this uh, line. Okay, this A dash B dash you see this is a 40 mm long line and internal angle 120 over here internal angle 120 over here and that allows us to make these two lines 40 mm each. All right. And let's move ahead again internal angle over here internal angle over here 120 degrees each we're going to go ahead and once you have these two points you can join them and close this hexagon something like this and let's name the remaining points C D E F with a dash. Alright guys we have now created successfully the front view of this object 
assuming that the surface is entirely lying on the vertical plane now we are going to look at this object from the top okay so let's have an arrow in the downward direction let's have the projector lines something like this okay now this is the intersection point okay the top view is going to absolutely lie on the xy line because the initial assumption was that the entire surface is resting on the vp that's why this is going to be a comma b c comma f d comma e and that's it let's draw a line okay so this portion you see from starting from this point to this point please see where my mouse is hovering and this is the portion which you're going to see from the top in the form of a line all right so that's the top view and step one has been created successfully in step number two basically what we do in projection of planes is we always incline the surface in this case no surface inclination has been given to us directly but it has been given to us indirectly in the form of say this edge ed which is opposite to this edge ab is actually 50 millimeters in front of the vp something like this all right so let's have a point a b over here and 50 millimeters in front of the vp I'm, I'm going to make a line over here something like this and somewhere along this line i'm going to have this point e comma d okay so you can get your compass out of the compass box keep one leg of your compass over here other leg over here then with this guy as center you need to put an arc and that's what you call point e comma t fine then you can join both of them all right something like this and the thing left is c comma f it's pretty easy keep one leg of your compass here other leg over here then with this guy a b as the center you need to put an arc here again and this is going to be point c comma f if you try to work out if you keep your protractor over here then you can work out the surface inclination with the vertical plane and it's going to work out as 46 degrees now let's have the uh, simultaneous of uh, front view of this and let's look at this object from the front okay so let's have the projector lines from down to top and from left to right something like this now these are the intersection points say for example we want the intersection point uh, a so a is going to lie somewhere along this line vertical line and let's see where the horizontal of a is horizontal of a lies over here so this is going to be point a similarly the remaining points can be worked out and they're gonna lie somewhere here let's turn all the points in proper sequence to have this squeezed hexagon so that's the squeezed up hexagon all right this is not the true shape of the hexagon this is the true shape of the hexagon all right and this is the squeezed up hexagon okay guys in the next step what we're gonna do is the edge that is this edge a dash b dash which is in the vp it is also going to make a certain angle with the horizontal plane. That angle has been given to us as 60 degrees. So initially what I'm going to do is I'll make this line, 60 degree line. And somewhere along this line, I'll try to create a rectangle. Let me show you what that rectangle is. You can clearly see that this hexagon is inscribed inside this rectangle. Please see where my mouse is hovering. Okay. I'm going to recreate this rectangle over here at an angle of 60 degrees. And it's going to be looking something like this. Inside this rectangle, I'll recreate this hexagon over here and then I'll take the corresponding top view, final top view in fact. So let's say we want to have point C and we want to have point F. Keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here. Similarly, you can keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here, put one arc over here, other arc over here, something like this. This is going to be point C dash and this is going to be point F dash, something like this. Now again, Let's say we want point B dash, we want point T dash. Keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here. With that same radii, it's going to work for this one also. Make two arcs, one over here, other over here. B dash and D dash. And similarly, you can work out point e, A dash and E dash. All right. So that's point A dash and E dash. Let's join all the points in sequence to have this hexagon or recreate it at an angle of 60 degrees. All right. Now let's have an arrow in the downward direction let's have the projector lines from top to bottom let's have the projector lines from left to right and these are the intersection points let's say for example we want to have point b so this is the vertical of b this is the horizontal of b and this is the intersection point that will give you point b's top view okay similarly you can work out all the points and it's gonna work out as this and when you join all these points in proper sequence you're gonna have the final top view something like this so guys that was all from my side and if you have any doubts or queries do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them in the best possible way and as quickly as possible and guys if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing then do recommend and encourage your friends and classmates to subscribe to this channel so that all of us can benefit thank you for watching this is manas patnak signing off take care have a great day and keep drawing